came to Montessori in my 30s when I my children were going into te- my th- first three were just going into teenagers. I ran a, a Montessori Montessori um, parent toddler programs for 16 years, and I suppose that is what really launched me into wanting Montessori outside. You know, outside of of the the classroom situation, I. I Parents were quite reluctant to do Montessori at home or scared to do Montessori activities at home with their children. They wanted it to do it to look perfectly. So I kind of started consulting with parents that were interested. I mean, actually, Simone Davies was my first home, my first home consult because she was a parent at my school in Sydney and she was really interested. And I was interested in what how she related to her children. So we kind of um and she worked for me for a couple of years before she did her training. So, um, yeah, we're very close and, and collaborate a lot. And, um, yeah, so I just got really interested in, in helping parents um, implement Montessori principles in the home environment. So, um, and it started with toileting because, of course, that's one of the biggest challenges um, in the home environment. And everything relates to getting our children to to cooperate with us. Um, if we're struggling to get them to cooperate with anything, we'll we'll ditch it, you know? So if we're doing it too difficult for them. So it's about simplifying your home environment, really. Um, and even in the classroom, I learned with having parents in the classroom that um, if I could get the parent on board in the classroom, the child was much more cooperative. So it was. it's about making it simpler enough for actually the adult to understand what the child's learning and and really slow down enough for children to to really enjoy the the process so that's really um how I love to help both educators and parents and uh, and it's what got me out of the classroom and doing it full-time consulting because I felt I could make more impact that way (laughs) I will go to the first question. I will start with the questions that the people were asking when when you were registering. Um, I think we will not be able to cover everything. So I will start with some of those and then I will cover the questions that will come uh, here on the Zoom. Uh, So we uh, actually help the people that came uh, live uh, online and now. And uh, Fern, my first question. Uh, When it comes to practical life, I get frustrated with all the mess. When we are transferring vegetables to a bowl, my 11 month old wants to experiment with throwing them on the floor instead. And then she gets frustrated if I take them away. Should I hold a boundary even if she doesn't understand why at this point or let her do the science experiments and waste half of our dinner? <laughs> okay, so this, just clarify, is this carrying something for, for a meal or is it just transferring vegetables or? Uh, as I understood, it was for dinner. It's for dinner. Okay, and she's 11 months old? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, um, yeah, I think little ones, um, like, for instance, taking something for them to carry that's manageable and letting them being the model more of how things, um, like in the classroom, in the baby class, for instance, um, or with my grandchildren, I'll say, glass or plate choose do you know so giving them something that's manageable for them to carry to the table um you know a glass with one sip of water in it um or you know just carrying the fork and the spoon to the table while you model carrying um the plate because yes at 11 months old they are into seeing the natural consequence of something (laughs) they'll want to be dropping things and you you know picking them up um this the more um simple steps that we give them in the beginning with a very clear boundary that the more that they will be able to do more and more steps in the process. But if we give them something that is probably not age appropriate, 
they're going to be doing the inappropriate thing and we're going to give up. Um, so for an 11 month old, like carrying, carrying the bowl with a full or just carrying the apple to the table and then you modeling cutting the apple at the table so they see the apple being cut or um, yeah, that first year is really about letting them observe. Uh, that's why I love the two step stool and letting them observe one simple step and yes having a boundary on what step they can accomplish rather than letting them touch everything right from the beginning um, will mean that you can you can see what they're capable of and add one step at a time I hope that answers that question um, sufficiently I hope as well I I will add it's it did to me <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, let me find another question. How to manage our son when he refuses things which are needed? For example, drinking water, brushing teeth, getting dressed, etc. I don't. Okay. Have, I don't have the age. Yeah. Um. I, you know, we were chatting just before that communication and and skills in gaining their cooperation whether it is cutting an apple brushing your teeth as you've mentioned um getting dressed getting dressed is one of the biggest challenges so usually it is about um there, there's three skills that us as educators for under three and parents have to learn we have to we have to slow down um, the biggest frustration for toddlers and babies is that as adults, we move far too quickly for them to get the steps in the process. So um, if you were at my um, talk on practical life, you'll see that movements have to be very slow. If we're talking and moving at the same time, our, our children will miss what we're wanting them to do. So um, anything that involves movement, it really helps if we don't talk at all. And and dressing is one of those things that um, I model. I used to actually dress an adult at my toilet at my toileting workshop, um, just to show them how slow you must go in order for a toddler to get the steps in the process. Having a dressing stool is paramount because it can, kind of sets a boundary for where we're getting dressed. I, I speak to a lot of parents who are chasing children around the house um, to get them dressed or, you know. <laughs> um, so conf confining the space. Um, and with a young child, you can do you can do a very low stool. You know, those those little toileting, um, at, they toilet, sell it as a toileting step. It's only about this high and it's not really appropriate for a toddler to use at the toilet, but that little step, you know, which is about 10 or 15 centimeters high against a wall, you've got to do dressing away from all the activities. Um, many parents use a distracting object, you know, to keep the child occupied, but then they're playing with a toy while you're trying to get them to cooperate to dress. So, you know, the, the clear boundary of this will be available when you're dressed. You know, I will put your little monkey over here and he'll watch you dress and you can have him when you are dressed. <laughs> um, so, you know, setting setting boundaries um, is the key to getting cooperation, whether it's dressing, you know, toileting, um, brushing your teeth. Brushing your teeth was a challenge I was talking to a parent about yesterday. Um, it's better to model brushing your own teeth and letting them brush their teeth at a very minimal um, process from young, because once you get their interest, you'll be able to demonstrate something, th the extent of how well they need to brush their teeth. But it's better to model in your own mouth and let them just be sucking a toothbrush beside you than trying to force a toothbrush and trying to force the activity to be perfect um, from the beginning, because really their milk teeth, you know, yes, we want them to learn to have clean teeth, but I found it's one of the, the things that parents really do get a lot of resistance about because they're forcing something in their child's mouth rather than just doing it at very little incremental 
times. In the bath is a good time to brush teeth, you know, because they can pick it up several times and um, especially when they're really little. Um, and, um, and, you know, you can just do a little song. This is the way we brush our teeth, brush our teeth, brush our teeth. Something that, that makes it fun and engaging rather than, I've got to have my child's teeth clean, you know. Um, and, um, you know, parents need to bring a bit of humor into these simple activities as well. Getting dressed, I found a dressing stool, having children not at a place where their toys are, um, so at, you know, put it against a, a cupboard in the neutral space. Um, and um, I do have some getting dressed videos on my website, which, which um, you know, I can give you a link to a dressing video. And I probably do a few demonstrations on the lecture that's coming up because um, dressing and undressing is a first under independence and it gives them a lot of confidence. So um, really persevering on a daily basis when you're in a calm, calm space. So, you know, collaborative dressing can start as soon as they're standing up. Um, and the key is getting them off a change table as soon as you can. Um, so the change table makes it a very adult. Um, and I've been to houses where parents are still changing their child who's three on a change table so I know that it's a worldwide issue because we want to confine them and get it done quickly but as soon as you're getting them onto the floor and getting down to their level whether it's um you know dressing toileting everything it's about giving the child options so that you can start getting that communication of collaboration as as young as possible so that you can build on that school. Um, if you're standing up dressing your child from the toilet, for instance, from when they won, by 18 months, you've already got quite a lot of collaborative skills going on in terms of um, listen to me, um, stop, you know, and simplifying your language. Arm, leg, sit, stand, pull, you know, push, doing single um, word um, instructions for all the way up until they, you know, two and will, will help them actually collaborate with the movement. Whereas if we're doing long, ex you know, come on now, we, it's time to get dressed. Let's get your stool. Let's sit over here. You know, we're going to granny's house today. And the more you talking, the less your child will move and cooperate. So um, we're going to granny's house, time to get dressed, stool, go, sit, <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's, it's actually separating so that when you need them to move and listen to you, it's only a little bit of language for them to um, interpret rather than long sentences, which make them stop and do nothing. Um, Thank you. I think that will help with all aspects of you getting their collaboration in those activities.